Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Manager Certification. We are in chapter two talking about the test management. As a part of it, we are in 2.3, risk-based testing and other approaches for test prioritization and effort allocation. As a part of this, we are still in 2.3.2 talking about risk-based testing techniques and this is the part two of this particular subtopic. As a part of this, in previous tutorial, we understood about several ways by which the risk-based testing can be organized and conducted within a particular organization as well as a particular project. But when it comes to the same, of course, we need to also take care of certain uh, minor or major things which you can relate to, uh, which is stakeholders and of course everyone contribution. If there are no right people to associate associate and add value to the risk-based uh, testing or risk analysis process, then of course that's not going to be worth. So you need to understand that how exactly the engagement would be, what kind of contributions you can expect from the people and how do you really make it successful when you talk about that risk analysis process. So usually the most critical success factor for the risk-based testing is the involvement of the right team of stakeholders in the risk identification as well as assessment process. Because of course, that's where we need a lot of perspective, a lot of different past experiences and a lot of intuition to add value to. Because everyone would have come from a different organization and has bought different uh, expertise in terms of uh, dealing with different types of projects and different types of products. And of course, they add a lot of value. In fact, if you're talking about a product-based organization, people have their own way of thinking and uh, predicting the outcome of a particular product. Of course, a developer thinks from a different point of view, a tester thinks from a different point of view, a business stakeholder thinks from a different point of view, and so on. So that's the reason we look forward to have as many different stakeholders as possible to add more value to your risk-based testing process. In fact, all stakeholders have their own understanding of what constitutes the quality for the product and their own set of priorities and concerns about the quality. Now, not only development and testing comparison, even if you talk about the testing, we have performance team, we have security team, we have usability team, right? Now, in these three teams itself, you will have variances, right? The performance person thinks from a point of memory leak, security person thinks from an authentication point of view, and usability thinks from the usability right, user friendliness. So, you know, things can definitely contribute more when you talk about uh, identifying risk items and as well as assessing their severity and criticality. Now, there are two major group of people which we can call them as stakeholder here. Number one is business stakeholder and the second is technical. Business stakeholder includes customer, users, operation staffs, help desk and technical support staff among others. Now, of course, these stakeholders understand the customer and the user, and they always tend to contribute from the user point of view or the customer point of view that this is what we are trying to expect. And these are the things which could happen. Now, of course, these uh, representation that these stakeholders understand who is the customer and what expectation the user may have and thus can identify the risk and assess impact from the business perspective. On the other hand, if you talk about the technical stakeholders, these include developers, architects, database uh, administrators, network administrators, and definitely many others related to that. These stakeholders understand the underlying ways in which the software can fail and thus can identify risk and assess the likelihood from the technical perspective. Now, some, st some stakeholders have both a business as well as technical perspective. For example, subject matter spurt. The SME, he knows from the business point of view and or he knows about the technical point of view and he can actually contribute or give you cross questions when you're talking about <clears throat> assessing these kind of risk at any point of time. So that will add a more value in terms of determining from both aspects and definitely the experience is quite huge to share on this. So these are the people in testing or business analyst roles often have a broader view on the risk due to their technical and business combined expertise. Now, 
The process of identifying risk item is one that generates a substantial list of risks. During the identification itself, you realize that what else we are not looking into or what is that which is being, you know, you have to target on. So until unless you do the analysis, you do, don't really have a plan with you at how exactly your testing will go on. So there is no need for a stakeholder to argue about the risk, right? Or the risk item which you identify. Now, why, what do you mean by that? Argue? Uh, on a risk item of course for example i'm a developer one and i have reported a particular risk item and for maybe the testing team it might not be a risk item at all or maybe for architects it might not be a risk item at all so i don't have to argue and say that no no this is not a risk item and we are not considering it because a developer knows his shoe better he knows what exactly he has to undergo with and he would have seen a lot of development interfaces where they get stuck right so architects testers and other people don't have to argue on that because for him that is a risk item and we just can't neglect it so we have to value everyone's contribution here because from their perspective from their domain from their practices this could be a risk item and we just can't neglect it <clears throat> Another way is like, you know, when you, these kind of things happen, then as long as the stakeholders perceive something as a risk to the quality of the system, it is a risk item. So we don't just have to, you know, negotiate on that. However, it is important that the stakeholders achieve consensus on their ratings for the level of risk. Just like, you know, when you talk about the uh, sprint planning or, you know, when you do the estimation session, then you try to get a consensus, right? The voting that everyone agrees to that, yes, this is the level of risk. Like if I'm rating a particular risk item which was identified by me and we are trying to assess it and I rate it as medium, then what other people have to say when they understand about the risk? So, of course, I have to explain them. I have to detail it that what you think your risk item is all about and let the other you know stakeholders understand and then give that particular common uh, vote or common estimate to that in terms of criticality severity or likelihood now the uh, more important thing if risk based testing is going to be a long term process then the test manager should take the initiative here now test manager must successfully advocate and initiate the risk based testing with these stakeholders because sometimes your project uh, might have some simple risk or probably certain risk which are just specific to that functionality but for you if you're working on a product based organization then this particular risk can be prolonged in such cases the test manager must take the initiative and start and begin the risk based testing much earlier in the life cycle and try to coordinate and invite all the different stakeholders in order to contribute to the overall risk based testing process the cross functional group must see the value of the risk analysis to ensure ongoing use of the techniques this requires that the test manager understand the stakeholders need expectation and time availability to participate in the process so as a manager also he or she has to manage all other activities related to that because i may have a lot of valued contributors but probably they might not be available when we need them so i need to make sure that what's their schedule and how we are planning to it and how they will be aligned to these activities if in case i plan for a session but they are not available there's no point on that so that's where we are looking forward to uh, you know make sure that we coordinate well with them and make sure that they're available at that point of time the next thing comes to be the second part of it like what makes it a good stakeholder the good stakeholder engagement uh, with the quality risk analysis process offers an important benefit to the test manager which generally means that like how exactly uh, you know or probably a stakeholder is available but probably not contributing to it so that does not make any sense to any organization or any process so test manager must make sure that uh, these people when they join here for a session they are even effectively contributing to that if they're not contributing what's the point of conducting this so this benefit is that that on the under specified projects with weak or missing requirements, the stakeholders can still identify risk when guided with proper checklist. So use of checklist is being you know, added uh, here in order to make you understand that certain product based organizations very well make use of checklist and they prefer checklist to answer these queries about the risk item identification. And in fact, the, to a certain extent, the determination of the level uh, of the risk as well 
This benefit can also be seen when after the implementation of risk-based testing, the defect detection effectiveness of the test team improves. This happens because a more complete test basis, in this case, the list of quality risk item is being used. So of course, you see the effectiveness because you have been observing your product for a long time and you know that what common mistakes or what common challenges you face and what your product is basically passing through, what face, what challenges, what problems. So you can basically quit, you know, create a quick list of that and call it as a checklist. And next time you release the next version of that, you keep an eye on these kind of things. I probably keep it as a reference rather or basis and then you do your risk-based testing as a taxonomy or probably checklist. So whatever you call it, but this is going to add a lot of value to your overall process. Now, during the test closure of the risk-based testing, test team should measure the extent to which they realize the benefits. Of course, until and unless you measure the effectiveness, you cannot call a process as successful. So you must have certain matrices, certain you know checklists which will measure the effectiveness of your process. That how beneficial your effort, your you know contribution were in order to mitigate or identify those kind of critical risk. Now, in many cases, this involves answering some of or all of the following four questions. What you see here as a part of the matrix and consultation with the team. So you can use any kind of thing to measure your effectiveness, which really makes a value and impact. So these are certain uh, four questions which you can answer at the end. That is, did the test team detect a greater percentage of important defects than of the less important defects? For example, I found 100 defects, but all of them were cosmetic defects like minor related to graphics, messages, spelling mistake, color, font, style. That doesn't make any sense, right? Did the test team find most of the important defects early in the test execution period? That means the prioritization was more effective. Like your prioritization was very well aligned and you could find very critical defects much earlier in your life cycle. Was the test team able to explain the test result to the stakeholder in terms of the risk? Like when you execute certain test cases, how relevant that outcome was to the risk item which you identified in the same feature or functionality. So, you know, the justification on that, the explanation on that makes it really important. And did the test the te test team skipped? The test the team skipped uh, have a lower level of associated risk than the executor. So, of course, there are certain test cases which you may skip at any point of time due to any reason, any factors. There are a lot of things. But was there any kind of risk associated with that, first of all? If it was associated, then what kind of severity was there, like impact? And likelihood related to that. So level of risk must be low and uh, the one which we are definitely executing should be higher. So you, even if you are excusing a test case execution, then you have a valid reason for that. All right, so that completes your risk-based testing technique and understanding how exactly a risk-based testing must be planned, organized, executed, and controlled in order to make it more effective and executable. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.